All right, so let's learn how to install Python on Windows. We're going to install Python 3.4, which I got from the python.org website. I'm actually installing this on Windows 7 32-bit. I usually go ahead and install it for all users, but that's really up to you. I haven't installed it before, that's why it's asking me if I want to overwrite them. I also go to Advanced, and I tell it to go ahead and compile the Py files to bytecode. I think this makes the Python libraries just load a little bit faster. It's really up to you if you'd like to, like to do that too. It's kind of an optimization. And this will take about a minute. Now when this uh, <coughs> bar gets done, updating your system, you'll see a couple of black uh, console windows appear and a bunch of text will be scrolling by and that'll be the uh, Python getting compiled, so to speak. Basically it turns the Python, a lot of the Python files into PYC files that will load a little bit faster than a regular Python file. Here we go. It's going to start to scrolling a lot of text by very quickly. Oh, I forgot. Python 3.4 also installs setup tools and pip, which will uh, make installing additional third-party pack packages much easier. And here's it. It is compiling. You may be wondering if, if Python is included on any other operating systems. On most Linux systems, Python is included by default, and Mac also includes a version of Python. They may not be the latest Python, however, so if you want to work with the bleeding edge version of Python, you may need to install it as well. Whatever you do, do not uninstall Python on a Linux box, as Linux may depend on that particular version that is pre-installed. Now we can finish. And one thing I like to do is make sure that I can access Python from the command line. So let's open that up. If you type Python, it should appear. But for whatever reason, the latest Python uh, does not install quite right on Windows. So it does not recognize as an internal or external command, as you can see. So let's just fix that. Go to My Computer, right-click on it, and go to Properties. This should be relevant for Windows XP, Vista, and 7. And I believe you can do it on 8 as well. Uh, go to Advanced System Settings, Environment Variables. And then under System Variables, scroll around until you find the path. And you want to double click that. And at the very end, you want to type a semicolon and then the path to your Python that you just installed. In my case, it'll be installed at 3.4 because I installed Python 3.4. And I'm also going to set up the path for um, the Python scripts folder. 
which will allow me to run pip from the command line. Okay. I need to open up a new instance of the command console as it doesn't update very well. And let's see if this works better. Okay, so now we have the interpreter, which is awesome. You can actually do use it much as you would um, idle. So that works. And let's see if pip works as well. Oh, I must not have done that quite right. Let's go back. This is something that's always good to know how to fix what you messed up. Looks like I forgot to put in the right slash right there. Put in. So always check your, your typing. You know, sometimes it's really easy to put a typo in there. Let's try this again. Alright, so pip works as well. This actually tells us what you can do with pip, all its command line options and everything else. And now if you plan to use uh, Python to do Windows development, I highly recommend getting a couple of other packages. I'll show you where you can find them. Uh, PyWin32 is a Python binding to uh, Windows, a the Windows API. It's available on SourceForge. And oddly enough, when you go here and you try to click on the download, it only downloads the readme.txt. This has been a problem for several years now, and I don't know why the maintainers aren't fixing that. So you actually have to click on Browse All Files instead. PyWin32. And I would just get the latest, which happens to be build 219 at the time of this recording. And you have to look through here and find the one that matches your version. So in my case, I want Python 3.4, Windows 32, because my machine is a Windows 32-bit machine. If you grab the wrong version, like AMD64, it won't install. And if you get it for the wrong uh, Python version, it'll also ask you where the Python installation is, because it won't be able to find it. So basically, you click on this, download it, and you're good to go as soon as you install it. The other items that I like to use on Windows are created by a guy named Tim Golden from the UK. So let's go to his website and I'll show you what he typically has as well. Winsys is awesome for doing Windows administration. If you have to work with Active Directory, he's got a good, an awesome wrapper for that as well. Windshow has a lot of convenient functions that you can use to find uh, paths at the desktop, my documents, uh, the favorites folder, just makes it really handy when you have to deal with multiple users to find those particular paths. And um, if you do much at all in Windows, you probably have to deal with the Windows Management Instrumentation, um, or WMI, on Windows 32-bit. And I think it's on 64 as well. And it's just really handy to use that to find certain things like the size of your hard drive, etc. These are really the main tools that I like to use when I'm working on, Python, on uh, Windows with Python. Um, occasionally you might want to use like uh, C-types, which I think comes with Python now. So, but overall this is a good toolkit to start with. Hope this helps you too. Thanks.